And like it is that chain of trust, I think that we've all had in you, trusting you and experiencing that trust. And yeah, and then it's like extending and then the trust extending. And so it's like this chain of trust that we're all just trusting. And then when we're not trusting, it's just the egoic patterns of fear and doubt and always coming back to that, okay, remember, I'm going to trust. So we're trusting the Holy Spirit. And then eventually what I've, I'm experiencing is, is that we all hear the exact same voice in the end. It's like that washing mm -hmm. away. It's like, hi, I am hearing that, you know, through the trust. Yeah, in the end it's, it's mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it, in the world there's a, a model called consensus where you, you know, it's not very often used because it's such a, people have great difficulty reaching consensus. Even husbands and wives and boyfriends and girlfriends, you know, if you had to operate on a consensus model where you, they were both in total agreement on everything before a yes would go through, mm -hmm. not much would, you know, Hey Merle, shall we go out to the restaurant tonight? No Fred, we were out there last night. It's my turn. You know, you can see whether even in the world where it's, it's trading off, you, your way this night, my way that way, is still a compromise of back and forth. It's not hearing one voice. Where Merle and Fred go, Are you hearing what I'm hearing Merle? I am Fred, don't even have to speak it. Let's get in the truck and go to Mickey D's. You know, it's it's got to come down to a shared purpose where you're all hearing the same voice, not trading off and compromising. We'll do it your way, we'll do it our way. I mean, some of you know that I, my, some of the people I, I have so grateful for their witnesses, like the Lucketts, and, and Sarah helped me get in touch with the Lucketts uh, maybe a year or two ago when I was going through Hawaii. But we were having this glorious uh, dinner. She came all dressed in her purple and and Jack was there, and it was so great. They're probably both like in their 80s, and and he said, Chase is like, how do you practice the course nowadays in a practical way? Because they've been known to do all kinds of things in course meetings. Eulalia took off her top one time and bared her breast while she was facilitating a course meeting, and Chase is like, we don't, like, those are the good old days. We don't have any, there's nothing <laughs> like that going on in the planet now. There's no, nobody that's that bold. Okay, nothing I see means anything. Here, let's go. And I had a, a priest friend in Cincinnati who was there at that meeting, and they knew him. They still remembered his name. I was back at my course meeting, and he's going, the damnedest thing I saw. My eyes were as big as saucers. The priest, John Seiler, going out there and seeing. Him. So anyway, we, we just flow along with things. But the, but the point of it is, is like you really have to be willing to just really trust and, and let go. And the Luckets were great examples because they were very joyful and they were reminders to us that that you just have to take it all the way. And when Jason said, what are you doing nowadays? They trade off, they still trade off and sleep on different sides of the bed every night in their 80s because they don't want to get too familiar with one side of the bed. Now, that's practice, you know, that, that's just a practice, but again, it's not meant to advocate a ritual, but it's just the presence that was under that was, the purpose was, we don't want to get too familiar with one side of the bed over the other. And this, this group, this is a couple that's been practicing the Course for decades. I mean, they were the pioneers. These were Bill Thedford's teachers, and so they've been at it a long time. And I just have a reverence and a devotion for for willingness to practice that much and that deeply, to not try to have the I know mind about, you know, hey Jack, you're on my side of the bed. Well, you Eulalia, you know, keep your elbow over there on your, <coughs> so they're not into that. They're into being present, and that's, that's really beautiful, so. Yeah, and I just want to say too, like, it, yeah, it's not like you have, it's like we're washing away, like again, trusting each other. It's like we're learning to trust one another. And I feel like for me, why I came here is because I really trusted the Holy Spirit. You know, like I'm trusting the Holy Spirit first. And then I'm coming here and now trusting my brother and trusting you. And, you know, it's like trust, okay, I prayed and I can't decide what the answer is. <laughs> you know, trusting each other. It's like, okay, trusting. You know, I'm going to trust Holy Spirit. And I don't know what that means. It may, you know, yeah, I just, I just have just full appreciation just for that, yeah, washing away. Well, it isn't the trust, because I know me and you, Ben, 
many times we've had where, you know, we were working together and you came in and I was looking at the next line. Thank you for your presence and devotion and for your willingness to expose all. Because it's like, like as we're trusting, it's like, what isn't that? It's like, no, I'm scared or I'm fearful and I'm willing. I'm willing to trust you, but that's like kind of the washing away and like trusting. Trusting again. Okay, I'm going to trust you again. It's this deepening and deepening and really just the experience of trusting the Holy Spirit is really what it is. Yeah, I mean, I, I have such gratitude for you, Ben, because I, I wasn't even here that one time, but we've had <coughs> many encounters, but... Lisa said something like, one day you came in and she said something, I'm, I'm hearing that you're to get your hair cut. I mean, you better be in a, in a trusting community. When you walk in, it's like, what? You know, I mean, that's, that takes trust. Mm -hmm. It takes trust. And, and we're not talking about crazy wisdom schools where, you know, get up on the table and dance naked and all these crazy things that, that devotees have been put through for, for decades to please the guru, or the guru is just playing with you. Would Jesus really do such a thing? Would Jesus, you know, you know, do that in the name of exposing? You know, it's like, it's, it's, a, it's difficult enough to expose the unconscious mind without being put through a bunch of ego tricks on top of it and, and feeling mistrust. So this is a very, very devotional path where, you know, when people look at me about that, like, really? Or something? I always say, I really wouldn't ask anyone to do something that I haven't done. And usually it's I wouldn't ask anybody to do something that I haven't done a lot. Probably hundreds of times over. And also without an invitation. Like, you know, if everyone comes here is coming based on voluntary nature. They're, they're volunteering to be here and they know that they can volunteer not to be here. You know, and it's kind of, that's my part, is you're welcome to join me and you're welcome not to join me. I will love you no matter what happens? It doesn't matter about the form. No one is cast away, no one is unwelcome, you know. For some, they've had to watch that over the years, where, where they've gone off and, you know, sometimes I'd be driving along and Lisa would call up on the cell phone, David? Yeah? Hi. Or I'd call her, hey Lisa, how you doing? Because she's been in the darkness and hiding or whatever for months. We're having a gathering down in Tennessee. You're welcome to come. I am? <laughs> <laughs> After but, I bolted. I thought like I blew it. Many times. Oh no, come on, money. come on. What are you doing? You have any plans? <laughs> Not really. Get on in your car and come on down. You know, it's like, and, and that, the welcome never ends. Some of you may have heard that song, a Christian song. And a friend's a friend forever. The Lord's the Lord of them. And a friend will not say never, for the welcome will not end. No. And, and it ends a lifetime's not too long to live as friends. It's a beautiful song. It's this song of you can't mess it up, you can't go wrong, you're always welcome. You're honored to do whatever you believe you have to do and go wherever you have to go and so forth. And it actually it's more than not even honored, you're blessed to do what you need to do. And with the guidance and with the trust, that's what we rely on for peace of mind. You're always welcome into that. And you're all, the welcome never ends, you know. You can always come. Sometimes people aren't really ready for certain steps. But the, the readiness will come in the Lord's time. And then they'll be ready to, to answer the call. Jesus had many people around him back 2,000 years ago that, that seemed to reject him. And, and go off, and it even talks about that in the Urantia book, but then sometime years later they'd show up, I'm here, I'm ready, I'm in the ministry, I'm there, even though Jesus was long gone, that was fine, it was perfect, it was all in the script, it was all just in the perfect timing. And there really, in that sense, wasn't a real delay. You know, delay is unknown in eternity. And it seems tragic in time just because this need not be. We really don't need to delay anymore. We can really dive into this fully without any fear and doubt. And the rewards, the fruits are spectacular when you do dive in. And when you step back for a moment, Holy Spirit's not keeping score. Holy Spirit is not a human presence. Oh, come on. How many times have I told you that? Come on, do it, do it, just do it. You know, the Holy Spirit's not like that. <laughs> The Holy Spirit never commands. The Holy Spirit never demands. It's all, I love you. 
This is the good news. That's the good news. <laughs> this is I the good news. It. We can't mess it up.